Welcome to Trading 101, learning to develop a cohesive trading plan. So today we're going to discuss how you can develop your own cohesive trading plan to help you create guidelines that define how you're going to trade and execute trading strategies on a daily basis. There's no single trading plan that's perfect, that works every time, that's for everyone. And you can't just go download one online and hope that it's going to work out perfectly or most of the time that it's going to work because it's not. Uh, you need to develop one for yourself because you're a unique person and inevitably that's going to create different issues and you're going to have a different risk tolerance than someone else and a different trading style. And what motivates you and presents a challenge for you is going to be different than other traders because it just, it always varies from person to person. Because the market moves so rapidly, you don't want to find yourself in an, an emotional state of mind that makes you feel overwhelmed and inevitably leads you to poor decision making and rash decisions. So your trading plan becomes a guide in these moments because it removes you from the emotions of the situation and it refocuses you on following through with the plan and executing your trades because you made so many of these decisions beforehand when you were in an ideal state of mind. So think of it as something like making a will when you're of sound mind or a prenuptial agreement even. And so you're gonna act in accordance with what you've demonstrated as a winning trading plan through paper trading and through things that you're going to learn and not with the feelings of the moment that move with every single tick of your chart. So we're going to talk about some of these factors that need to be taken into account when you're creating your trading plan. And if you don't create a trading plan, then you're just, you're going to fail as a trader long term. And so there are several factors you need to consider that you want to trade by. One of those is risk tolerance. Does your risk tolerance match with your objectives? What are you risking in your attempt to meet your goals? Are you risking your entire savings account? Are you risking your ability to pay for food and rent? Or are you just risking money that you can afford to lose? Thinking about the activities that you enjoy, do you tend to gravitate towards risk-loving activities like mountain climbing and skydiving? Or does that the thought of those activities just scare you to death and you'd prefer to pet your cat or knit maybe? How much trading capital do you have to work with and how much are you okay with losing? And how much of your capital will you risk per trade? The other thing we want to examine are your motivations for trading. What makes you want to trade on a daily basis? Are you supplementing income? Are you trading for retirement? Are you trading part-time or full-time as a way to replace your job? And why have you chosen trading over long-term investment? And are you choosing it in conjunction with long-term investment? Let's also examine the challenges to your trading plan. Do you have enough time to prepare for daily or weekly trading? Do you know how much time you need to prepare? And do you have enough knowledge and the right knowledge? Do you have enough money to trade and are you okay with more risk by using margin? Is your risk tolerance too low to be able to profit? Have you chosen a good broker with transaction fees that work with your style of trading? And what is preventing you from trading the way that you want to? What do you, might th what do you think might be a problem? And what kind of trader are you now? And is that the same as the trader that you want to be in the future? And what will you have to change about yourself? What sort of self-improvement goals? What sort of psychological tools do you need to use in order to help you reach your trading goals? So you need to become a better person. So what are you going to do to get there? The other factor you want to consider is testing your trading plan. So paper trading enables you to mostly remove the emotions from trading so that you can just trade basic ideas to see if they're even workable. So one question you want to address is have you adequately paper traded your plan to see that it consistently can make you money removing emotions from the equation. Also another factor to consider is what is your market? 
Do you plan to trade futures, stocks, bonds, forex, options? And within those realms, what will you trade specifically? Will you stick to a single exchange? Specializing in one or two areas of the market is especially helpful because of the breadth of the market and how much knowledge would be required to understand it all. So you'll need to consider this before you even choose a broker because not all brokers support all aspects of trading and those that do can be really, really expensive. So some you wouldn't want to consider. Some really big brokerages offer everything, but their fees are so exorbitant that you might not ever make money. So you want to consider what your trading time frames are and all of this is going to factor in to which market you choose and which um, broker you choose to access the market through. The other aspect you want to consider is your trading system. So whatever you decide to make it be, your trading system is basically the set of rules that make trading into an automatic process for you, more or less. You'll need to decide whether or not you want your trading to be very mechanical, where you pick a system and let it guide all of your trading decisions much like a computer would do. And you set it to trade for you, and basically it's a hands-off system to some extent. Or discretionary, where you're making decisions on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, and you make all of these decisions during the course of the day. So either way, you're, you're going to have to look for certain conditions in the market that you believe give you a high probability of a successful trade. And those are called setups. And you're going to need to know when you want to trade by looking for trigger points, um, the places where you see the market moving through certain indicators and it lets you know that it's time to jump in. So regardless of the type of trading system you use, you're going to have to know all of these things and you're going to have to set up rules and then follow them. So the other factor that we want to consider is your record keeping. So it's not enough to just trade, you also have to keep accounting records because this is also one way that you can assess how you're doing. Um, so it helps you understand how much you're risking on average for each trade and you can also assess where your mind was going into and out of each trade as well. So you can spot trends and notice them before they happen the next time. Um, so your accounting records actually help you with your trading in the future and help you avoid emotional pitfalls. So you can see where your trading plan is actually failing. And so you can correct it through keeping financial records. So one area where we want to also look at is keeping records. And so this enables you to understand how much you're risking on average for each trade. And you can also assess where your mind was at when you entered into and out of each trade as well. And you can spot trends and notice them before they happen the next time and use them to trade again in the future. So you want to write down details such as the targets, the entry and exit of each trade, the time, support and resistance levels, the daily opening range, market open and close for the day, and record in comments uh, why you made the trade, what you may have learned, what your mood was throughout the trade, were you falling into any traps. Uh, also, you should save your trading record so that you can go back and analyze the profit and loss for a particular system, uh, drawdowns, which are the amounts lost per trade using a trading system, uh, the average time per trade, which is actually very necessary to calculate the trade efficiency and other important factors. And you also want to compare them to a buy and hold strategy. So would you have made more money if you had just bought it and held it for a while? So more investing rather than trading in this context. So this is a business and you want to take it seriously. So you have to be the accountant too. So when we take all of these factors into account and we really address who we are as a person and what our trading goals are, then we can set these rules into action, we can apply discipline, and we can execute them, and this is actually what it's going to take to become a successful trader.